I'm Nisha Zachary, and this is The Zigzag Leap, brought to you by Permission to Leap. For years, I've been talking to people about having permission to take a leap of faith. We all know that life doesn't happen in a straight line, so how do you overcome your past and possibly current circumstances to live the life you were created for? Stick around to hear our guest answers that will lend you some courage to give yourself permission to leap, no matter how twisted the path may be. I'm Nisha Zachary, and this is The Zigzag Leap, brought to you by Permission to Leap. For years, I've been talking to people about having permission to take a leap of faith. We all know that life doesn't happen in a straight line, so how do you overcome your past and possibly current circumstances to live the life you were created for? Stick around to hear our guest answers that will lend you some courage to give yourself permission to leap, no matter how twisted the path may be. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Zigzag Leap. Today, I am talking to Leslie Urbis. She is a dietitian who is former military. Um, She is a wife, a mother, and she is a business owner who is helping people transform their lives um, through reacquainting themselves with themselves and changing their way of seeing food. So thank you for joining me, Leslie. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's start at the beginning. How did you get to here from the military? Yeah, so so I joined the military as a brand spanking new dietitian, and they sent me to Jacksonville, Florida, where I still currently am. Um, I was active for about three years. When it came time for me to talk about where I was going to go next, uh, they told me Virginia and wouldn't really give me a conversation to continue um, talking to them. So I was like, okay, well, I've only been in for three years and I can't talk to the person that's deciding my decisions. I definitely don't want to do this for 20 something more. Right. So I decided to get out and I did a a short stint in like a civilian job. And then I actually went back um, in my government position um, and I did the exact same thing that I did active duty, but as a civilian while I was still in the reserves for about five years. Um, And then in 2018, I requested to get out of the reserves. I got out in 2019. Um, I had my daughter and I was still working full time at the Naval Hospital here in Jacksonville as a civilian. And I remember one week I was driving home to pick her up. I was working 12 hour or 10 hour days at the time. My husband is military himself and was actually stationed in, he's stationed here, but the ship was still being built. So he was in Mississippi most of the time. And Mm -hmm. I would drop my daughter off at daycare. Like the moment it opened, like I was the mom standing outside the door to drop her off. And Mm -hmm. I was also the mom that was like three minutes before the door closed. And I will not forget the day that the daycare lady was like, Oh, look, Lily, you were the first one here and the last one to leave. And I, I had that mom guilt, like everybody does, you know, somebody just, guilt you into feeling like you're awful. And I put Lily in the car and I cried the whole way home, which is only like a six minute drive. And I stopped crying because I, you know, I only get to spend a few, like basically an hour, maybe an hour and 30 minutes at night alone with her. Um, So I stopped because I didn't want her to see that. And I just remember putting her back to bed and crying again and letting my husband know, like, I'm looking for a different job. I need to do something different. Um, So I went and I, I truly manifested the job that I got. It was actually a work from home position, gave me tons more time with my daughter, a lot of less stress, a lot of less drive time which is what I was struggling with with the, the Naval Hospital job. And I, whether I got fired or I quit or whatever happened with that job, something happened and I left. And I was shell-shocked for a while. You know, I was just like, how did this happen? Like, you know, it's kind of like your safety net is gone. The, right. the reality that you created, you feel like you create this safe space for yourself. And then all of a sudden, whether I'm sure anybody out there that's been fired or quit a job or been in this place of unknown, it's like, what do I do and where do I go and which right. up and you you semi feel a little bit off or like like I'm not making money or I'm not doing xyz right and it, it, it really took a toll on me and that's when I just kept hearing in the back of my head like go do what you want to do ever since I was in college I always thought I wanted to be an entrepreneur but I didn't see how I could do it like mm-hmm. how would I be able to do it to fund being an entrepreneur while not making money, right? Like I didn't see how I could do both things at once. Um, I always felt like I never had enough time. 
And then, you know, I decided to become an entrepreneur when I had a baby and then I got pregnant with the second one. So, cause I was going to have more time that way. Right. Right. <laughs> sense, but that's, that's sort of how I wound up here. You know, I'd have to say, Maybe I I don't want to say that I was guilted or shamed into doing what I do, but I think that part of that directed me like was, you know, like the higher calling the universe calling me like the only reason why you're getting these things is because we need you to go in this direction instead. Right. Stop going in the direction that you think you need to. You've been called to go this way. So that's how I wound up here. Wow. I like that that you heard that and you knew that you had been called to go somewhere else. You said something in there about, um, you know, somebody else was making your decisions. And then you have the teacher throwing guilt on top of these decisions that you really have no control over. So in light of that, what is your definition of permission? That's a great question. So I've, I've really thought about this, like, because I'm like, do I give my daughter permission to eat candy or does she just do it? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So, so the, I, I go to that one because she did eat candy before breakfast this morning and I was like, what am I doing wrong? But I've always allowed them to do that, right? Like I'm, I want them to know candy is not something separate that they need to like get whatever. So as I was trying to think about permission, <clears throat> I think it is being your true self without harming another, right? So, so yes, I have permission to go do what I want to do. I have permission to be who I want to be as long as it continues on with providing more life. It doesn't try to harm someone, kill someone or detract someone from more life. You know, as I, you know, invest money in my business or invest in my growth or things like that, um, Mm -hmm. you know, you think, oh, I maybe need permission from like my husband or from, you know, like what would my parents think of me if they knew how much money I spent? X, Y, or Z, right? We still we still go to that. We're looking for someone else to give us permission. But it's truthfully, if it's in your best interest and your higher power, and it's not going to harm another, to me, that's permission. Go do it. Just go do it. I like that. So you take your leap of faith. So how did you find the courage to finally say, I mean, like, I'm doing this? Because I know you said, you know, you were fired from the job, but it's like, you could still go find another job. So how did you find the courage? <laughs> yeah, I love that. So, so I can't say that I went straight there. So I was fired, let go, whatever, in June of 2019. And at first I, 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 because I was almost like I was fired or yelled at in my own home, I almost didn't feel comfortable because I worked from home, right? Mm-hmm. I almost didn't feel comfortable. Like my safe space was semi taken from me. Right. Be- I mean, when I left this job, I was yelled at harder by this woman than I was ever yelled at by my parents. Like, I cannot forget how I felt that day. Um, And my husband was gone. I actually went to a friend's house immediately because I was like, okay, got to go pick up my daughter and go somewhere else. I cannot be in this space, right? Very anxious feel. Um, And I I think that remained, you know, for a month or two. And I, I, I point that out because I want people to know that it is okay to have that moment where you feel like, you don't know what to do and allow yourself to be there. But I would check in with myself every week. Am I ready to move past this or do I need to feel in this more? Um, and that was very important to me because I needed to like let it go to move on to the next position. Um, so that's what I did there. I was a beach body coach as well. Um, so I okay. you know, started like dabbling with that when my daughter was born, like, why not make some extra money? I had stopped teaching. I, I taught fitness classes as well when I was working at the Naval Hospital before my daughter, but I could no longer do that because when I taught the classes, they didn't have daycare and my husband wasn't here. Right. right. So I liked doing multiple things. So I was like, oh, I'll do this beach body thing. Right. I think it sounds great. A lot of us entrepreneurs start as MLM people, right? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like our touch of like, wait, why don't I just do this for myself, right? right. <laughs> um, and that's really how Beachbody started for me. I, I used it. I loved it. And I was going full all in with it. And I just kept hearing in my back of my head, like, why are you just selling Beachbody when you could do this yourself? And it was repetitive and over and over and over and over. And I could tell that it wasn't me saying it, you know, it was my higher calling. Right. Um, So I think that went on for a few months before I was like, okay, listen, it's time to listen, right? So I looked at my husband. I was like, I'm going to start offering things on my own. Um, And I went a couple of different avenues before it actually worked out for me in the right way to take it to the road that I wanted to take it to. Um, And I would say I really went all in when I got my first coach in February of 2020 when I was like four months pregnant with my son. Um, And then, of course, you know, COVID hit. I was not... 
I, I don't really pay attention to the news, so I wasn't expecting anything to happen. When people were like, everything's going to shut down, I was like, nah, it won't. And like literally the next day it did, and I was like, okay. So now I'm going to start a business in COVID, pregnant. My daughter's going to be at home with me because the daycare gave us an option of keeping her in or taking her out. So my husband and I were like, well, I'm here anyways. I don't have clients yet, so I might as well take her out, you know, right. while I'm being. So I, I built it uh, with her here and it wasn't exactly easy, but I scheduled lots of meeting calls. Like I did tons of market research before I did anything mm-hmm. and I would do like market research calls and we would be playing in the background. Mute is a wonderful thing. Yes. I <laughs> mute. Um, and I never felt bad. Like she, she's no different for it. I didn't shove her in front of the TV. We played and I did what I needed to do and she needed what she needed to do. And I felt like it empowered me and I became even a better mom because I was finally re-nurturing that side of me. Like I'm not just a mom. I right. am a mom and a business person and I love what I do food and nutrition wise. So that's kind of how I got to where I am. Nice. So what's it like being a military wife and raising two kids? I mean, like I know from my personal experience, like I started my business when my daughter was four months and then, you know, 17 months later, here's the next one. So I totally understand what you're going through. It's like back to back kids while you're trying to build this other baby over here on the side. Um, But you're also a military wife. I at least had my older son and my husband. You're from being a Navy brat myself, like I know that one person that's on a ship is gone quite a bit. So how does that all work? Yeah, I would honestly say it's chaos sometimes. Um, You know, I hear a lot of times like you have to play the part of the business owner you want to be. And I'm like, okay, so I pretty much have to like (laughs) not show everybody the fact that, you know, sometimes like the house is destroyed and like there's nerds on the floor or there's you know, oatmeal in three places or whatever it may be. Um, But honestly, as much as it is chaos, it's also like, I am thankful I have daycare. That is like my way of being able to get things accomplished. Um, And I don't feel bad or guilty. At a point I did like feel bad or guilty for putting Mm -hmm. my kids in daycare. Oh, I'm supposed to take care of them, right? But nowhere in there it doesn't say you're supposed to take care of others before yourself. You're responsible to people, not for them, right? And Mm -hmm. as long as you're taking care of you, you're gonna be able to take care of others. And that was a big thing. And I teach that in what I teach nutrition wise. So, So that was important to me, like I needed to take care of myself, but Uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, you know, hard work. Sometimes it's a lot of, you know, we play the little map game. Like we have a map of the United States and the whole world because he goes out in the ocean. Right. Mm -hmm. And when he's gone for long periods of time, we move him around the ocean and say where dad is um, because they'll ask from time to time. Well, the older one, will, the younger one has no clue. Um, And then I really say the hardest part is, is like the moment you get used to them being gone and they show back up, they go back to like, he always returns back to the routine we had. I'm like, yeah, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. Well, then what do we do? Right. And then by the time he picks it back up together, it's like, okay, see you later. Right. Like come back again because the kids are so young, nothing really stays the same. Right. So him being gone for two months really changes that. So there's always a learning curve in this house and it, you know, people are like, is it easier with him here or gone? I was like, I don't know. It depends. Right. Sometimes it's like a third kid to pick up after, just kind of joking there. And sometimes it's like when he's gone and I'm just here alone for a whole weekend with the kids, I'm like, I need adult conversation, <laughs> right? So, yes. so it's 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 a lot of chaos. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's also knowing that there will be times when I may want to work on the business, but my kids have to come first at that moment because I can't, you know, do mm-hmm. both. And, you know, I cannot multitask, play with the kids and continue learning or have a good conversation with a client or a prospective client. So it's knowing my boundaries as well. Um, And I'd really say that that's a benefit to me is knowing the boundaries, because I also know, you know, what clients I want to work with, what clients I don't want to work with. And that's that's really good in perspective. And I also yield that in my coaching as well, like teaching you boundaries um, for your nutrition and fitness. So, yeah, I'd say that that would probably be the hardest part with everything is setting the boundary, keeping the boundary and bouncing back and forth between like married life and single mom life. (laughs) Oh man, I can imagine what that's like. Um, You mentioned the way you approach the fitness world, um, the health, nutrition, all of that. And we were talking about this um, before we hopped on here, the way you approach 
dieting is different for the, from the way most dietitians approach it. So can you explain like how you flipped it? Yeah, of course. So, so most of the time, whenever you go to any sort of diet or place or anybody that's going to give you some sort of meal plan or anything like that, they come at you with a piece of paper. Like they'll ask you for your height, your weight, and then you, maybe your BMI, some other things may come into play there, but basically mm -hmm. and you back, this is your life, right? Follow this and continue onward. And you're like, great. I don't see pizza or cheese or margarita or <laughs> right, nothing good. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. All right. This sounds good. I could do this. And we think that, right. But then we all have that story of, I did it for a while and then I fell off or mm -hmm. you know, I did it for a good period of time where I can only manage to be on it during the week. And then on the weekends I fall off because I'm not in routine and the kids are here and I want to dine out and blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. I don't come at it from that perspective. I don't, on day one, when people start working with me, they're expecting me to be like, oh, don't eat that. Take that out of your diet. Do X, Y, Z. And that's not at all what happens. What really happens is I get to know you. So I want to know your past history. I want to know your past diet history. I want to know your family history. I want to know your medical history. And then I want to know what you want your life to look like. Is this something where you're like, I do want to have you know, pizza every Friday. I do want to have margaritas twice a week. I do want to have a glass of wine every night with my husband or my wife, right? Mm -hmm. Where are you coming from in terms of your perspective? Because I need to know what's on that piece of paper in your mind, right? I right. don't want to you paper first. I want to come at you with, what do you want your life to be like? 98% of the clients that come, you know, say they want to be free. They want to be confident. They want to look sexy. They want to feel sexy. They want to feel better about themselves, get back into their clothes again, have the energy, right? Mm -hmm. A piece of paper plan is never going to be able to give you that. You're living by something else, right? It's just like going to school and having to learn math when you didn't want to learn math. Just because somebody tells you you have to learn, it doesn't make you want to do it anymore, right? right. <laughs> so this is, this is designed for you personalized. And I really come at it from a perspective of changing your mind around things first. And believe it or not, with some shifts in some of how you come at dieting, how you look at yourself, how you view yourself in the dieting world, you actually start to see results before we're actually like, okay, now we're going to get into what the plan looks like. And it's shocking to people how, how fast that they can go when they go this way instead of like, okay, what diet do I need to go on next? Right. <laughs> The tagline on your website says freedom from what weighs you down, which I absolutely love. Um, and then you've got the mindset work that you're doing. So obviously there's a connection between like what you're thinking and what you're eating. So how do you ensure or not ensure, but like get them to long-term freedom by changing their mindset? Yeah. So we have to change how you look at yourself, right? Um, you know, I have to change how I look at myself too. Um, one of the biggest things that I'm still smashing through is that moment when I got fired or lost the job. To me, I became just a mom. Mm. And I want that to come across in any weird way or bad way. If you're a stay-at-home mom, I applaud you. Go for it. If that is right for you, that is. But to me, I lost identity. To mm -hmm. me, like, now I'm the mom. I'm the person that cleans. I'm the person that cooks. I'm the person that does the grocery jobs. And don't get me wrong. I did all of those with a smile on my face to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in there, I know I lost myself. And I, I was like, I'm that mom. Like, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. I'm just a mom. Like, why did I go to school to get a degree? Why do I have a master's? Why do I, like, is this really what I want for myself? And if I would have come to the conclusion that, yes, that was... I would have been okay with it, but I didn't come to that conclusion. I came to the conclusion that there was something missing. I needed something else, right? So I had to, I still have to break through that. Sometimes when people are like, hey, how's business going? I'm like, what business? Oh, wait, right. Not, okay, okay, I get it, you know? Because even as a mom, sometimes we downplay it, you know? Oh, it's my mm -hmm. side thing. You know, it's just something I dabble in. Oh, right. yeah going good, you know? And so I'm like, it's going really well. Like my clients are getting amazing results. They're coming back with more confidence, more happiness, more freedom. They're loving their lives. Like, instead of like, oh, it's good, you know? And that's it. That's your comment, right? right? I had to transition myself. So in coming from a perspective of you, you have a dieting baggage history. Whether or not you are like 15 pounds overweight or 50 pounds overweight, we all have one, right? Mm -hmm. We've all so oh, I'll restrict this or I'll miss that or I'll just add in more exercise to get X, Y, or Z results, right? Right. 90% of the population, I should say, has this, right? And that correlates 
It's how you come at any type of diet that's next. That correlates to your identity of how you are. You know, the other thing could be is we're just big boned, right? That's another mm-hmm. thing that we identify as. Until we smash through that, no paper you ever follow is ever going to work for you because it will work and then you'll have the story that it gains back. And that's the that's the place that I come through when I'm like, hey, you know, you say you're this powerhouse woman. You want to be walking on stages, giving these conversations, lighting people up in confidence. But in all actuality, in the back of your head, you feel sluggish. You've got a roll over your jeans that you hate. You don't feel comfortable in your clothes. And while you're great at your position of what you're teaching, you have this piece that's missing. That's where we transition you. And then you become that powerhouse even stronger than you are getting more energy and able to command yourself, whether it's that mom or it's that, you know, business owner or that woman that's walking on stages, whoever that person may be, the big picture there is that you now have that piece that's always held you back, you know, relying on the scale to tell you how good or good you aren't, right? Like, it's like, I'm good. The weight went down. Oh, I'm an awful person because it went up, right? Mm -hmm. That that controls you does hold you back in so many avenues that you're not even realizing. So- That makes sense. So it's like understanding that your role or a number doesn't define you. It's just a piece of the puzzle. Correct. You have to get rid of like extra pieces that don't belong to your puzzle so that you can put it together. Right. Right. Exactly. And it's so, it's so, so powerful. Like, I mean, think of yourself. I'm sure you could probably think of something of a way you identified yourself that you had to break through to get to where you are today, you know? Mm -hmm that hold us back in our brain and once we start to do it in our business we're like oh we can do this fitness wise nutrition wise but then we have that story over and over and you're like why i just don't get it and that's just because it's if it if you're if you're not like zoned into it like myself because this is where my job is it wouldn't be where it is i hire coaches for other things right so right. there's nothing wrong in needing that avenue but the the goal there is is like how you said my tagline freedom from what weighs you down what that means is like freedom to, from the thoughts or the scale or the the food or the the things that actually control you that you don't control yourself. I like that. Control what you can and let go of the rest. Exactly. So what is it that keeps you going even, you know, through all the chaos, through all the things that you're working through in the background? Like, what is it that keeps you moving forward? I'd say my purpose. You know, I you asked me this probably a year ago. I'd be like, oh, my kids, my husband my family and I'm not saying anything wrong with that whatsoever. Like I get it. Everybody does. They are a reason, but they're not the reason if they were removed, I wouldn't give up. Right. So it's my purpose. My purpose is I really want to help transform women's lives out there. So they have that confident, free feeling, ability to laugh and have the margarita ability to go where they need to go to spread their message and not have this massive guilt because they're in philadelphia and they want to have a philly cheesesteak but they know it's not on the plan or they you know are in mexico and there's tons of amazing mexican food with big margaritas or something around and they're like oh i just can't do that that'll destroy the whole diet right like i want you to be able to be free and confident to do those things and then still have that next day where you get up on that stage or you talk to whoever you're there for and command it and own the room and own that space like that's what i love to do and that's my purpose i know that that's why i'm here so i do it because At the end of the day, I have no other calling like saying like, just go be a mom, right? The days that I am just a mom, I do love it. But when Mm -hmm. I'm in this role and this, I feel like my whole purpose, my whole passion, my whole heart grow. I love that. So for the woman who is still trying to figure out the purpose for her being, if it is just being a mom, that's awesome. If it's just to be a wife, that's awesome. But for that one that knows that there's something missing, like, how do you, how do you make sure that you're hearing your inner voice, your higher calling? Yeah. So that's, that's taken me a while to actually even know what that is because I have like long since let that go. Right. We all had it when we were little and then (laughs) we did follow our higher calling and our mom was like, don't do that. Right. Right. (laughs) To that voice right <laughs> so we shut it out really early um i think i got it back when i joined the military a little bit um i, I know i scared the crowd out of everybody in my family by doing it so i feel like i got a little bit of it there but i i lost it again i think when i became a mom 
And it was because I was like, kids first, kids first, kids. Mm -hmm. first. And little by little, I would say it's the nagging voice at first. It's the voice that won't go away. Like, why did I keep hearing, you need to do this for yourself? For two months, I kept hearing, you need to do this for yourself. I'm like, well, I don't know what that is. Like, like what? Talking to Dude, how do I even start? <laughs> right. Like, is there a fly in the corner or something? Like, what's happening? You know, I don't, I don't know what that is. Right. Okay. Um, but now I realized it's when I can sit quietly with myself, mm -hmm. out my mind. I sometimes cannot just sit because if you're anywhere like me and your kids are super young and my son maybe gives me two nights a week that I'm not woken up at least once, not always do I have to get out of bed, but I'm always woken up at least like four or five nights a week. So when I'm asleep, I am asleep hardcore. So sometimes when I'm like, oh, I'm going to meditate, no matter if I'm sitting, standing, laying, it's like, and she's asleep and yes. like second flat, right? doesn't take me long. So how do I do it? I journal. One of the things I was, one of my coaches had me do was journal pen to paper for 15 minutes. You are not allowed to take it off the paper, whatever came to your mind. If your mind went blank, you drew a straight line until you could think more, right? Wow. And I did this activity and I processed that around minute 10 to 11, every time that I did it, I would get my higher voice. My higher voice would come in and be like, one, two, three, four, five, this is what you do next. Now it comes sooner when I put the pen to the paper because I've, I've done this activity now multiple times. Mm -hmm. But it was very helpful for me to do it. And the first few times I did it, I remember drawing lines a few times, like stupid task is me drawing lines. Like, what am I doing? I'm wasting my life, like more lines. And then it was like, boom, boom, boom. Like after I got through that, it was like clear, 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 do these five things. And then I was like, oh, okay, great. I accomplish them. And then when I would get confused again, I go back to the writing activity. And every time it's helped. And now I think it's like, about minute five to seven right now, depending on how busy I was before, I can mm -hmm. draw it, get super clear and know what I'm doing next. That's awesome. I've heard a lot of journaling tips. I haven't heard the straight line, like keeping the pen to the paper. I know that when you're writing, it changes, you know, your neural pathways and, you know, it connects deeper to, you know, your hand to your brain. So the straight lines makes a lot of sense because you're continually moving your brain and connecting with that thought. What do you wish that you had known before? That I wasn't really thinking. I was thinking based on my parents. Wow. Yeah. So I follow, I follow quite a few coaches. Um, I started with some very big, good business coaches teaching me the strategy and realized quickly, I'm very, I'm a very good doer. You give me, I mean, I'm all right. Like I'm a mom, a military wife. So yep. I, it's gone. Like there's never a day, like, when I was fully doing everything in this house, like the cleaning, the cooking, the grocery shopping, and all of the laundry was done in one day. Nothing to, to like, everything was perfect. Like when he would walk in the door, it was like nothing was out of place. Now that I'm allowing myself to have the space and the grace to like have it, sometimes you can, someone's like, there's food everywhere on the floor. I was like, oh, I look well. <laughs> I have had time to go back to cleaning up. Why sweep to sweep again six minutes later, right? It's like, right. <laughs> better things to do with my time. But before it would have been like, sweep it up, throw it away, right? Sweep it up, throw it away, right? And I've stopped that. Um, anyways, so Larry's only 14 months old. So we give him a little bit of space on the fact he drops everything on the floor. Um, but I, I started following these coaches based on a friend of mine that just told me, I would say David Nagel, um, he runs a podcast. It's called the Successful Mind Podcast. Mm -hmm. like, listen to it. It's yeah. amazing. And I never process, processed that I was only thinking based on how my parents taught me to think, right? So when I went into business for myself, I felt irresponsible. The other thing is that my parents don't really believe in, more, more my mom than my dad is like, she hates social media. She's not on social media. How do you form a business? Everything's going away. When COVID hit, COVID is gonna, because of Amazon, we're gonna destroy the grocery stores, which could be true. Like we may not have grocery stores like when we get older. It could just be everybody buys everything online. We don't know that, right? Right. Everything has changed. And so in my mind, I'm like, I'm building a business against my mom. Like she doesn't believe that this is possible. She doesn't write. So, so then it was like a battle between myself and I processed quickly with the coaches and the strategy I was doing. I was, I was like doing the strategy, but fighting myself mentally. And like, it'd be like, okay, I'll make it a leap and then everything will fall down and then I'll make a different leap and then everything will fall down. Right. Like, so it was a battle between the two. So I really had to straighten that out. And until I could figure that out, 
I was, you know, continuing to go backwards. And even now, like I'm still diving in, I'll have a thought or I'll say something. I'm like, oh, that's not mine. That's definitely something I was taught from my parents. How, what do I really feel about this? And like, it's like that commercial. What I don't remember that commercial that's on TV right now, but it's like the one where you're like, it's like their dad and like they take the role on as their dad. They're at like the, the, um, hard- that's the insurance commercial. I think it is. Yeah. Well, you know, all of a sudden you, like, I felt like I was in that commercial, like, I am just doing this because my mom did this, or my dad did this, right? Mm-hmm. That, that I think would probably be the biggest thing that changed everything. It's funny you should say that, because that is one of my big things that I'm seeing in my children. Like, we had, you know, what, 18 months at home, and, you know, they were in kindergarten, first grade when they came home. We made it all the way through first and second grade, and everything was fine. we did grazing for all the meals. (laughs) It's like, you know, when you eat, you eat, you know, you kind of do your own thing. And one morning, I think we had been in school, back in school, probably about three or four weeks. And my son woke up and he asked me, can I go to the bathroom? I'm like, excuse me, (laughs) what do you mean? Can you go to the bathroom? But he's been back in this system where, you know, you have to ask permission to do the simplest things. And it's just like, whoa, okay, now I've got some work to do. I've got to fix some things to make sure that you understand. Like there are some times and places where you have to ask permission, but then there are other times and places where you just know, okay, I have to make a move. Otherwise we're going to have a little bit of an accident. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's real. I totally get that. Yeah. I mean, as parents, we have to be trusting the people that like, you know, are teaching our kids and, you know, Mm -hmm like the the clergy that are behind it like I I totally get it it's I I see that sometimes too my daughter will say something I'm like where did you learn that she'll be like one day she said I don't have the energy for today I'm like where did you learn that I was like that's never been anything that's come out of anyone's words here she said she says her teacher she says her teacher's name taught me at school and I was like oh okay all right totally different level I'm getting this now like where do you like I don't have the energy for today right I'm over this (laughs) That's one I hear quite often. I'm just yeah. um, what? Yeah. So what are you glad that you didn't know before you started? Um, say how much you have to change. Yeah. You know, how much I really like, have to take on. How much, like, you can't unknow what you know, right? Like, right. how much I'm like, oh, God, it was so much easier when I was clueless. Was- yeah. <laughs> When I didn't process, I wasn't thinking. It was so much easier when I didn't have to think. Like, I love, I have really good friends from a long, long time ago. But mm-hmm. to have that process, like, this is a negative relationship that I'm having right now because they're in a negative space. And while I want to help them come out of it, we all have mm-hmm. to help ourselves. So part of it was like, now that I know that this is something that's bringing me down instead of allowing me to grow having to reduce the the talks, having to reduce the conversations, having to step out of relationships in hopes that they question and come ask why and what's going on so we can have the conversation so they can move to meet you. But when you change, you have to hope the other person wants to or else the relationship ends, right? right. So that would be the biggest challenge. You know, I the thing that I didn't, that I'm thankful I didn't know then is that I would be having to be challenged in relationships of my own and continue to, you know, like even to my husband, as I was growing and learning things and continuing to do things, I'd have Mm -hmm. to like, you got to learn this with me, honey, or else I'm afraid I'm going to make it too far or something. And we've, we've really done a really good job with that. And he's, he's really listened and honed into some of the things so that way he can know where I'm coming from, especially as I make larger and larger decisions and bigger money decisions. Like, on the same page with him because you know our vision is to make it to a certain age and i'll continue to do this and we'll travel everywhere without the military forcing us to do whatever right (laughs) exactly exactly so i know you offer brainstorming calls what does that look like yeah of course so i do what's called a brainstorm call because People come, I have a group on Facebook that's called Weight Loss and Wellbeing for High Performers. People go there because they want to have an answer. They really want to know, like, what do I need to do in order to lose weight, to feel great, to get this confident self? And the the guy's honest answer is, is that you're coming because you want to have an answer of why whatever you're doing isn't working. So in this brainstorm call, I learned, what do you want? Like, when was the last time you actually thought, what do you want your diet to give you, right? Mm-hmm. No one 
that when you go sign up for anything, it's like, here's your plan, follow this. Whereas I'm like, I need to know what you want. Can I even help you to get that picture of what it is you want? And when I can, or if I can't, I direct you somewhere else. If I can, I help you see how you can achieve it. And then you get the option, you know, would you like to work with me? If so, we talk about that. If not, you have a pretty good idea of the steps you need to take in order to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. Um, so I like to do them so that way people can become crystal clear of what they really need to do to change their own life. Awesome. So we've got the um, website going at the bottom of the screen. You can go there to find out more about Leslie. Um, there's also her um, brainstorming call. You can sign up at this web address here. I will also put it in the show notes and then under the notes for this video so that everybody can get in touch with you. But other than those two places, where else can people find you? Yeah, of course. So my name, Leslie Urbis, I'm that on every platform, basically. I don't have a Twitter, although I hear that that's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> um, but you can find me on any of those platforms. And then again, weight loss and well-being for high performers is my free Facebook group. And I go live every week in there with something that's tangible for people to start making those uh, decisions and life-changing results now. Okay, one more question, because now you've mentioned the weight loss for high performers. High performers are often very resistant to change, which seems counterintuitive. They'll, they'll do business stuff like really quickly. They'll do the things like we were talking about being a doer, like they're good at that. But when it comes to actually doing the change, which I know you just said, you know, is one of your struggles, and I know this one of mine. <laughs> um, so in the group, does that help make the change easier or? like because there's so much support yeah so that's a good question so when i say high performers i mean anybody that's ready to make a commitment i say high performers because if somebody is really turned off by that they're probably not my client and so that's a good way to to, to weed it out fast um as well as somebody that i wouldn't be able to help you know i understand that there's different strokes for different folks and i'm not here to save the world i'm here to save the people that you know are called to to my higher purpose as well right mm -hmm. um, in the group how I speak is to somebody that's ready to make that commitment. Okay. So in terms of that, it's like, you're going to know just based on how I talk, like, oh yeah, I definitely want to talk to this person or I'm not talking to this person. She's going to make me actually do something, right? Like I don't have to do it. I just want to complain about it. So you'll be turned off by it. And that's kind of the answer to that question. So nice. Okay, everybody. So make sure you are following Leslie on all of the platforms except Twitter and <laughs> drop by her website and sign up for a brainstorm call if you are ready to make the next step. Thank you so much for joining me, Leslie. I appreciate talking to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from Permission to Leap, go to permissiontoleap.com and subscribe to our email list. When you do, we'll send you a digital leap guide. Thanks again and talk to you next time.